Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to be. I want to go very quickly with uh, some of our numbers, and I want to spend most of the time talking about a vaccine updates. Uh, uh, we've uh, in Ontario, we're up 1553. Most again in tr in Toronto, Peel, York, uh, as you know, uh, Ottawa has gone into the red today. We uh, have not. We have not heard back from the ministry. I've recommended, although that we're at the border, to remain in orange. However, we will know tomorrow. Um, I will just uh, go over some of our numbers. Uh, where are we here? Sorry about that. I always have a there. Okay, so I'll just so our numbers uh, again from our point of view um, uh, are uh, again we've gone up. Uh, we're up to more than three thousand cases, uh, and overall uh, we've added um, uh, between yesterday and today seventeen cases, uh, seven each of uh, in our United Counties and three in Cornwall. And um, uh, if we're looking at you know the trajectories and rolling averages, you, we can see clearly now that you know Cornwall is on a, a downtick again. This is uh, mostly due to uh, an uptick that we had because of a cluster of cases and outbreaks. Uh, you can see that our orange line here here has gone back down, so we're we're really around the 35.5 mark overall. Um, again, uh, SDNG is a bit higher and Prescott Russell is lower, but on average we're there. So we are tending to to sort of hover around that. I uh, spoke to the chief medical officer of health on Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday, and then I emailed them this morning. Um, I'm looking at our other parameters, our uh, our numbers uh, in terms of um, percent positivity are are in the uh, orange zone. Uh, RT is a bit higher. Um, we're also looking at uh, we have one just one ind indicator right now. We are also doing wastewater testing in the Castleman area, and the, the numbers are less this week than they were last week. So we are encouraged there. However, like I said, we we are seeing we're right hovering around that line, but it really is pushed by this corner. Cornwall uh, uptick here and a bit of the SDNG uptick here as well. So uh, again, my recommendation was one more week in orange, uh, but we will have an announcement by the ministry. Uh, usually they do it on Friday. So at this point, we're going to hold still in that regard. Um, the other thing that's important is that now we are up to 52 uh, uh, variants of concerned VOCs. Um, again, most of which except one are UK, one is still pending. And um, uh, our positivity uh, is 31.9%. Um, in terms of other other outbreaks and, and other uh, issues. Uh, again, we have uh, said 21 hospitalized, nine in the ICU, uh, six in the ICU, I'm sorry. And um, in terms of our uh, long-term care facilities, the Woodland Villa is, uh, is over. Uh, the Palace uh, still has uh, two active um, uh, positive um, uh, residents uh, and uh, uh, no more uh, positive staff. They had three initially. Initially, uh, Place Rideau has just one um, one resident that's positive. Um, uh, McConnell um, has uh, Chartwell McConnell Manor has uh, initially had 13 positive, um, 12 are active, 12 out of 13 were VOCs. Uh, in terms of the staff, uh, seven of the 12 originally positive ones are still uh, active in that regard. Um, and uh, I just want to make a correction uh, for Hartwood. Our statistics have shown that there was an issue that reported several residents know that the, what it is is Hartwood has uh, no uh, residents and um, one uh, positive uh, staff, which is a VOC. The remainder of our outbreaks do not have residents involved. In terms of schools, again, we uh, we're at uh, we've added uh, two more schools since the 14th. Uh, we're up to 25 uh, cases, uh, active cases. Most of them are one in each, in schools and in 22 separate schools. Moving forward, and um, and so now I want to spend some time really on on vaccination. Um, I, I will share a presentation. Uh, so um, I think it's important to know that uh, uh, we're now uh, uh, in phase one, and um, uh, we're essentially continue with our healthcare workers, uh, with our adult chronic uh, home care, and adults over eighty. And I'll talk a bit about that later. Uh, we started that this week. Uh, phase two will involve again um, ex extending the people that are getting vaccinated. It'll be an age-based approach as well. And these are multiple people that are be get going to be getting it around the same time, depending on vaccine supply. And I will talk about that as well. So, 
Uh, looking at uh, age groups 60 to 79 in five-year increments, high-risk congregate settings, for example, uh, shelters, uh, group homes, and so on, um, individuals with high-risk chronic conditions, obviously, medical conditions, individuals that cannot work at home, um, from home, and uh, at-risk populations. And so uh, we're going to focus on, on that. Uh, I want to talk a bit about that, but I also want to give you a bit of a summary of where we are with phase one. A lot of people have been asking us where we are. So uh, our progress now is that we've given now, as of today, uh, two doses to all residents uh, uh, of long-term care and retirement homes, which is excellent. We're proceeding with healthcare workers, essential caregivers, and first responders responding to, I'm missing a word there, to medical, uh, to medical um, uh, calls. Uh, also vaccinating adults receiving home care. And uh, we started this week with the 80 plus population where we have actually um, set up 37 full clinics through the next, uh, between now and the first week of, uh, of April, uh, 14 of which are in Cornwall, uh, for 80 plus seniors moving forward uh, through the booking system, which I'll talk a bit later. We have booked 4,985 80 plus seniors. Um, and um, uh, we've uh, booked another 1,300 uh, phase one as well through our reservation system, which I'll talk to you about. Now, in terms of the seniors, uh, we've, had, we've estimated that we are about nine, we have about 9,000 seniors and 2,700 were in retirement homes, so they're vaccinated. About 1,400 were receiving home care and, and we're almost done vaccinating them. So we've got about 5,000 left, which is about the number that's been booked now. So that's very good. And we anticipate you know, having done that between now and the first week of April. So that is very good news. Now, a lot of people have been asking us about vaccine supply. And um, just today, I got confirmation of the numbers, so I'm going to share them. Um, so far, we have received at the health unit approximately 22,000 doses, including this week. And um, we've administered actually closer to 18,000 vaccines. And again, we approximate because we're still waiting for numbers to come in that we've done today. Uh, the hospital is also administering on our behalf, and I'm, I haven't included most of those numbers. So um, uh, we've got, you know, about 3,500 uh, left this week. Uh, for, th for uh, the remainder of the week. And uh, we know now that the, on average, because it's going to be mostly Pfizer that's coming in, but we're getting some Moderna. On average, uh, for the, over the next five weeks, we'll be getting about 4,800 doses. So I'm expecting another 24,000 doses before the next month. And so over the next five weeks, and so we, we kind of know. So, so by the end of this, we'll have vaccinated, um, you know, close to uh, 43,000 people. Uh, administered 43,000 doses, so which is excellent um, as part of our phase one uh, moving forward. So this is exactly uh, what we're dealing with. So we ha we are having, you know, four we are limited to 4,800 doses a week, and we could very easily, you know, do several cl big clinics and and do those in three days. But and again, that's what that's our rate limiting factor. We are told that. Uh, following the April 12th delivery, we will all, we'll be getting far higher numbers. So let's wait and see there. But that's where we are now. People have been asking us about the doses. This is at par per capita uh, compared to other health units. As a matter of fact, ahead of, of, others, of others, but this is a per capita, a fair per capita adjustment. As you know, initially we were not having, we we're having low flow, but now this has been made up. And so moving forward, we are expecting to, you know, start rolling through phase one and and then uh, going into phase two and again the phase two basically will be age appropriate um, looking at people with health conditions um, and people that can't work from home so uh, people in congregate settings include all these um, individuals uh, homeless shelters group homes and so on um, we then will go to uh, people that cannot work from home and again these are uh, workers, uh, uh, this is going to be vaccines at the, you know, towards the end of, of phase two, because we're going to be rolling into that. We believe that we're going to start that at some time in April, and, and, and that's our estimation. And again, pending, you know, numbers of vaccines and, and hopefully increased numbers, which again, are not including the other two vaccines. We not we don't have any indication at this point of AstraZeneca or uh, Janssen. 
vaccine. So that's going to be added to that. And so if you're looking at um, what we'll be doing, again, uh, a prior, by priority, but if we have enough vaccine, that's, those, these will be done simultaneously. So it'll be uh, elementary and, and secondary school staff, workers responding to critical events, police fire who are not responding to, to medical, uh, compliance officers, constables, uh, funeral attendants, and so on, uh, morticians. Uh, child uh, child care and licensed foster care workers, food manufacturing workers, and agriculture and farm workers as well. Uh, th then obviously we're going to proceed uh, high risk uh, critical retail, so it's groceries and pharmacies and restaurants are missing and personal service settings are missing and, and we have uh, manufacturers, liberal, social workers, there's a whole large group here of, of, of individuals. And then uh, included again in phase two, again, simultaneous, are individuals with health conditions. And so we've got individuals, uh, organ transplant, there's a highest risk. Again, these are put as, in risk as who's going to be first, second, and third based on vaccine supply. But I'm hoping that we'll be getting much more vaccines so we'll be able to do a lot of these simultaneously. And again, we're looking at the highest risk individuals, obesity is, uh, is a high risk, and then we have others, immune deficiencies, diabetes, liver, cancers, um, respiratory diseases, and so on, hypertension. And you know, um, if you look at you know our population, and, and you know, and, and don't forget, we're adding 60 to 79. We're adding uh, all the uh, you know those wor those workers that I talked to you about, and we have a higher rate of a lot of chronic diseases that are on this list. We're looking at a very substantial proportion of the East Ontario Health Unit population that will be uh, vaccinated in phase two. Uh, and then phase three will open up to everybody else. That's why I, I'm, I, I'm confident based on numbers coming in that we'll be able to get at least the first dose in uh, by the end of May. Uh, so again, pending those numbers. So I think uh, that uh, as we go into, into, the next, uh, uh, into the next sort of settings, um, uh, we'll, 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 we'll be able to ramp up uh, that that uh, that approach, and again, our rate limiting factor is the um, uh, the number of vaccines that we're getting. And as and, and you see, we've we've shown how many we're getting and how many we're expecting to get. And we're told that we're going to be getting a, m a month's notice uh, moving forward. So then, you know, probably next week we'll we'll be able to see what we're going to get moving forward into April and to May. So that'll give us a better idea. And, and we are expecting bigger numbers at that point in time. So I want to briefly talk about the uh, the booking system, how to book an appointment. Uh, I know there were some issues um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, what happened was, I can explain, is uh, we were asked to um, submit all of our clinics that we have booked for the next uh, month or so. And um, we submitted 30, 37 clinics, 14 of which were in Cornwall, and, and including Castleman and all the others. And for some reason, uh, there was some technical difficulty. The upload, uh, they didn't upload it properly. And it only showed, for example, in Cornwall, there was only one clinic and that booked very quickly. So people were very frustrated because it didn't show that there were the 13 other clinics that were there. Um, contrary to what a lot of people are telling us that uh, we did not exclude Cornwall. Cornwall was in there. Uh, Castleman as well had issues. They didn't put all the Castleman clinics in there. Anyway, we worked hard that day with the ministry. Um, some people were, you know, given, because there wasn't anything nearby, they were given appointments in Kempville, which was not appropriate, obviously. And those, by the way, if that happened, uh, you can we, we can change that. You can cancel one and go to another one in our area, obviously. We do have enough vaccine and we do, we do have enough places for the, the 80 plus. Right now, what's happening is that you're, it's the 80 plus only that are able to uh, make an appointment. Um, and uh, if they can't, they can just call a number because the, the number will, will help them if they don't have internet access and so on. Um, and so that's, that's, what the, that's what it's done now. Uh, other groups uh, who are in phase one and eventually will come to phase two because I believe that the uh, portal in, in the, 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 por the portal from Ontario will be age-based. We will. We have our own uh, what's called the pre-registration portal. That uh, again, people can put in in terms of you know indigenous, but whatever whatever the category they fall into. So for, right now, we have our healthcare workers now and others uh, who are, are essential caregivers and so on that go on that site, and uh, we get the list. Right now, we've got about close to. 
13 or 1400 names right now, as of today, uh, of remaining in phase one. And so what's gonna happen is we take those lists, the curated lists, and we will separate them. We will uh, uh, either uh, ship them, uh, put them into, book them into other clinics that are we're not running. Uh, and I'll talk about that later, the, the hospital, for example. And we the other remainders, we they go, we, what we do is we curate them. And uh, what they do is they get an email, uh, an email with a code. And when they put that code, this system will give them an appointment. So that's how that works. So it's called a curated system. And we'll be doing that moving forward. So that, that's, the, that's the way that we'll be capturing people and pre-registering people. And as we roll out now into phase two, when we start doing teachers and start doing other age groups and so on, that, that'll be an opportunity for people to, to register uh, moving forward. Just going to talk briefly about um, you know our uh, sites uh, in the health unit, how we've been doing it. So we have six uh, mass immunization clinics, and um, we have uh, one right now in Cornwall. We initially were at the uh, arena, the Ed Lumley Arena. Um, we, although it's very big and it's very good, it, we had issues. Um, it was a difficulty to maneuver if you're elderly and have mobility issues. So the the 14 clinics that are going on right now, between now and the first week of April in Cornwall, are going to be at the Cornwall Square. We have uh, some store space, that old uh, uh, unused store space that's there, and it's very easy to access, and that's been going very well. So that's continuing there. Uh, as we get, uh, as we go through the older populations and we go to more general populations, we'll be moving. We're now we're now looking at uh, going into uh, the um, Benson Center, um, the uh, the dome, the sports dome. There, it's very big, like a big soccer field. So we'll be we'll be looking there. Uh, in Winchester, we're at the uh, Steel um, uh, the Steel Arena. Uh, in Alexandria, we're at the Glengarry uh, uh, Sports Center. In Hawkesbury, we're at the uh, large Hawkesbury complex in the indoor track and field. It's huge. Um, in uh, Castleman, we're at the uh, Jean Bris uh, the Brisson Arena. Right now, we're using their convention center, their convention meeting, but we're going to be going into the arena floor, which is, again, very accessible there. And in Rockland, we're at the Jean-Marc Lalonde Arena, where, uh, I just want to remind media, tomorrow we're doing a media briefing at 1.30, and I'll take... Uh, I'll take the media inside to show a, a media tour of that a large um, mass immunization site uh, moving tomorrow. So um, in terms of mass immunization, we have that. We also have fixed clinics and fixed sites. So for example, um, we are working uh, with some of our partner clinics, community health centers, our hospitals, our four hospitals, we're going to start vaccinating as well. Already Cornwall is vaccinating and we'll be sending different populations to those, to those hospitals. We also have mobile clinics, the mobile clinics, which are the ones that are manned with our staff and our EMS partners from SDNG Cornwall and Prescott Russell. They will be going into the homes, um, you know, retirement homes. We'll also continue those. What we're planning to do, there are a lot of apartments that have seniors, and as we, as part of as we roll out the the age group, the lower groups, we're going to be uh, going to these apartment buildings with our mobile groups and va vaccinating them all at once. Uh, we're also going to do pop-up clinics. There are some areas, for example, like in Morrisburg and Embram um, and other areas in Plantagenet that we will be doing a clinic uh, off, um, you know, once, once or twice in those areas to make sure we capture those people as well. We're going to be doing home visits where um, individuals who are home-ridden, homebound, that cannot move, that cannot be, that cannot move, will be able to. We'll go in with our EMS and, and vaccinate them. We're creating some drive-through clinics as well, so it could have a, again, where people have mobility issues, they can just stay in the car, drive through. We've already done that with influenza, so we had good experience. And very importantly, we're going to be working with our primary care partners. Uh, family doctors, clinics, family health teams, where we will be providing vaccine to them so they can start vaccinating because they know best who their patients are with chronic disease. And and to, so we're counting on, on them as well. We're working with the several now all across our area to be able to provide them. And eventually we will be getting our area pharmacies. We've already uh, reached out. We've got about 30 that are already interested in our area uh, to be getting vaccine as well to offer it. Right now, the pharmacy availability is only in Toronto, Windsor, and Kingston. So uh, that's that's the, that's really our, our rollout um, of, of the vaccines. And... Um, 
I, I really uh, I wanted to be able to share this and, and uh, share this with the media and share this with the public uh, because we've had a lot of questions. But now that I know the numbers and we know uh, some of the timelines and we've uh, done those, I thought that it would be important for us to share those. And moving forward, we're going to add and update you know, as we get that. And hopefully our numbers will start to increase uh, moving forward. Donc, merci. Euh, donc, bonjour tout le monde. On va commencer euh, avec les chefs antériens. Euh, je vais faire ça vite parce que je vais aller euh, tout de suite euh, parler des, des vaccins. Euh, en effet, nous avons augmenté par 1553 cas. Euh, en Ontario, euh, la plupart sont à Toronto et Ottawa aussi a augmenté. Euh, bien sûr, euh, on, on, on sait que Ottawa va tomber dans le rouge. Nous, on est dans la limite. Je vais vous démontrer tantôt. Euh, donc, si on voit ici... Euh, au niveau des, euh, des cas que nous avons dans notre région, nous avons ajouté, euh, euh, depuis hier, on a ajouté 17 cas, euh, 7 dans chaque, euh, dans chaque de Prescott Russell SDNG et 3 à Cornwall. Et si on voit euh, au niveau de la moyenne mobile, on voit que clairement euh, Cornwall est très élevé, mais on voit que ça, ça diminue. Ça, c'est à cause des deux éclosions qu'on avait avec une trentaine des cas ensemble. On voit aussi, en général, l'orange, ici, la, la ligne orange, euh, est, est presque sur la ligne rouge euh, pour la moyenne de, de, de notre bureau de santé. Euh, donc, euh, euh, j'ai eu, eu un appel avec euh, Dr. Williams euh, et... À ce moment-là, on a dit que je, je préférais rester à l'orange parce qu'on est dans l'orange, euh, mais on va voir euh, euh, qu'est-ce que ça va, ça va donner demain parce que euh, demain, il va y avoir une annonce euh, pour dire quel bureau de santé vont changer. Et bien entendu, au, dès aujourd'hui, par exemple, Ottawa a tombé dans le rouge, mais euh, d'habitude, ils font l'annonce vendredi et ça, c'est exceptionnel. D'habitude, ils font l'annonce euh, euh, vendredi pour le lundi suivant. Euh, donc, au niveau des autres, euh, des autres euh, choses, nous avons des flambées toujours. Nous avons 21 patients hospitalisés avec 6 dans, en soins intensifs actuellement. Euh, au niveau des flambées dans les maisons de retraite, Woodland Villa est, est terminé. Au niveau de déclaration, de, de euh, c'est plus déclaré. Palace, on, on a toujours deux, euh, euh, deux actifs euh, euh, résidents. Euh, et euh, aucune des trois initiales euh, pat, euh, employés qui étaient pos, euh, positifs. Euh, Place Rideau, il n'y a pas de changement. Euh, euh, McGonnell, Manor, Manor on a, euh, actuellement, nous avons euh, 13 euh, positifs au niveau des résidents. Euh, 12, donc, sont actifs et euh, 12 sur 13 sont des variantes. Euh, nous avons 7 sur 12 euh, 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 initialement des, euh, des employés qui étaient là, qui, qui sont des variantes, et nous avons donc 8 actifs qui restent. Je vais juste faire une, une correction. On avait annoncé la, il y a quelques jours qu'il y avait quelques résidents de Hartwood, Hartwood euh, qui étaient positifs. Non, mais il n'y a aucune résident. C'est plutôt une euh, employée. Et le restant des, des, des flambés euh, ne sont pas... Euh, ne sont pas des résidents, sont des, des employés. Il faut dire aussi que nous avons 50 et 52, attendez, mon papier était ici, euh, 52 variantes, euh, variants of concern, euh, et donc notre pourcentage des variantes, c'est à peu près 32 euh, au niveau des écoles, nous avons euh, ajouté deux, euh, deux cas actifs dans deux écoles séparées. Donc, nous avons en total 25 euh, cas actifs, aucune flambée, sur 22 écoles. Donc, j'aimerais prendre le restant du temps pour parler des vaccins, parce qu'aujourd'hui, nous, nous avons eu une confirmation des, des chiffres qu'on va recevoir dans les prochaines quatre semaines. Donc, euh, je pense euh, je voudrais vraiment euh, donner une mise à jour au niveau des vaccins. Je vais juste préparer mon diapo ici. Et voilà. Donc, euh, on sait que le phase 1, vraiment, était plutôt pour euh, les personnes, euh, plutôt les maisons de retraite, les maisons de longue durée, euh, et, euh, ainsi que les résidents, ainsi que les personnes qui travaillent, les, empl les employés et euh, les visiteurs essentiels, euh, les travailleurs de la santé euh, aussi, euh, dans le domaine de la santé, les, 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 les autochtones, aussi les personnes qui reçoivent euh, les soins à la domicile et les adultes plus que 80 ans. Et bien sûr, 
sûr, nous avons euh, le deuxième phase. On va continuer probablement en avril. Mais avant qu'on procède à la deuxième phase, j'aimerais juste vous donner une mise à jour au niveau des, des progrès que nous avons faits. En effet, nous sommes toujours euh, dès aujourd'hui euh, en phase 1. Euh, nous avons, euh, je suis bien content d'annoncer que nous avons euh, donné la deux, euh, deux doses dans tous les résidents, dans les maisons de retraite, dans les maisons de longue durée dans, dans notre région. Euh, nous, avons, nous continuons avec euh, le travail de la santé, euh, euh, les premiers répondeurs et euh, les, euh, euh, les visiteurs essentiels. Euh, on continue avec les adultes qui reçoivent euh, la santé. Euh, le, soins à la domicile. Et euh, bien sûr, nous avons commencé cette semaine avec la population 80 et plus. Euh, nous avons, en effet, nous avons 37 cliniques euh, euh, disponibles à travers de, 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 le bureau de l'Est Ontario, dont 14 sont en Cornwall. Et euh, dès, euh, dès aujourd'hui, euh, nous avons booké 4 985 euh, euh, résidents de plus que 80 ans et un autre 1 300 euh, résidents, euh, patientes ou personnes qui sont dans la phase 1. Euh, donc, euh, et euh, ceci représente pas mal tous les, euh, tous les euh, euh, personnes de 80 et plus qui restent, parce qu'on a calculé, on a à peu près 9 000 dans notre région. Euh, nous avons vacciné à peu près 20, 2 700 à peu près dans, dans les maisons de retraite, et à peu près un autre 1 000, 1 200 euh, dans les... Euh, euh, dans les euh, qui, était dans, qui recevait des soins, des soins à la domicile. Donc, il nous reste à peu près 5 000. Donc, on est presque là. Euh, donc, euh, euh, avec ça. Et euh, donc, je pense qu'on va continuer, on va finir avec phase 1 d'ici euh, la première, euh, au, euh, le plus tard, la première semaine d'avril, euh, parce que nous avons bouqué jusqu'au première semaine d'avril, comme je l'ai dit tantôt, 37 cliniques. Au niveau des chiffres de, de vaccins, je pourrais confirmer aujourd'hui que euh, jusqu'à date, on a reçu à peu près 22 000 doses. La plupart sont Pfizer, mais on a eu quelques doses de Moderna. Euh, jusqu'à date, et c'est pas c'est approximatif, 1 750 500 doses. Et, et euh, il reste à peu près 4 000 parce que c'est la dose qu'on a reçue cette semaine pour qu'on puisse faire nos cliniques d'ici euh, jusqu'au lundi prochain. Euh, nous avons recevoir, ça c'est fixe, on, on vient de recevoir la configuration, à la moyenne 4 800 doses par semaine pour les prochaines cinq semaines, donc à peu près 24 000. Donc euh, avec les 24 000 et les 18 000, on est rendu presque euh, 42 000 doses de données euh, d'ici euh, euh, la première semaine de, 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 cent, de avril. Donc, ça, c'est un bon pourcentage. Donc, d'or en avant, donc, on va continuer avec nos phases 2. En effet, nous allons euh, travailler avec les tranches de 5 ans des, entre l'âge de 79 en reculant euh, parce que c'est l'âge. Après ça, c'est le risque. Au niveau des personnes qui, euh, qui ont des maladies chroniques, qui sont dans les, qui, dans, dans les euh, places dans, beaucoup dans, avec euh, congregate settings, ce qu'on appelle, et aussi les personnes qui ne pourraient pas travailler à la maison en effet, les travailleurs essentiels. Donc, si on tombe au niveau des, euh, des différentes places, des domiciles, c'est plutôt des, euh, les personnes euh, des domiciles, des maisons de groupe, etc., qui vont, qui vont faire partir dans, de ça. Euh, après ça, les personnes qui ne peuvent pas travailler à la maison, euh, on, on, tra on commence avec euh, les premiers répondeurs, euh, on les, les, euh, les enseignantes, les, les personnels des écoles, les personnels au niveau des garderies, au niveau des man manufactures d'alimentaire, les fermes, etc., et, et ceci, on a comme une liste prioritaire, mais euh, euh, si on, je pense qu'on va recevoir assez de vaccins, qu'on pourrait faire ça euh, à, au, en même temps. Euh, après ça, on tombe avec euh, les personnes qui travaillent dans une pizzerie, pharmacie, restaurant, euh, barbier, etc. Et on a une liste immense ici au niveau des personnes qui travaillent dans les, dans les magasins, euh, dans les secteurs de, de télécom, euh, dans une usine, etc. Donc, euh, ça ça représente pas mal beaucoup de gens, euh, à mon avis, euh, dans, dans ce euh, type de population. Après ça, on a les personnes qui, sont, euh, qui ont des problèmes maladies chroniques, bien sûr, les personnes qui ont des, des greffes, euh, des personnes qui ont des, euh, des trans transplantations, euh, etc., qui ont eux, des problèmes neurologiques, euh, la le leucémie, des choses comme ça, euh, obésité, euh, personnes qui reçoivent la chimiothérapie. Euh, et on a une autre liste ici avec maladies chroniques, euh, cancer, 
dire, maladie, diabète, euh, maladie de foie, etc. Vous voyez la liste ici qui est, qui est longue. Euh, et n'oubliez pas que dans notre région, nous avons un pourcentage plus élevé dans, avec les personnes qui ont, qui ont des maladies chroniques. Donc, si on voit... Euh, tout, euh, toutes les listes qu'on voit dans, dans, dans notre région, euh, dans, dans le mois d'avril, on, on, on vraiment, euh, en présumant qu'on aurait assez de vaccins, on, on va être capable de vacciner pas mal des, des, des adultes dans notre région. Euh, C'est pour ça que je pense que si tout va bien, on pourrait avoir vacciné ou offrir le premier vaccin à toutes les personnes dans notre région euh, euh, dès euh, avant le, le début de, janvier, de juin, donc euh, fin mai. Euh, donc, je vais juste parler un peu de, de système de, de rendez-vous. Comme vous savez, euh, lundi, euh, on a commencé avec un système provincial. Nous, nous avons été demandés de, de nous donner les listes pour les prochaines quatre semaines. Donc, nous avons euh, 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 transféré les 37 cliniques euh, euh, à, au ministère et euh, ils ont, pour, au niveau, et pour Castleman et, et Cornwall, euh, on avait comme Cornwall 14 cliniques, ils ont juste mis une. Euh, ils, ont, ils ont mis de mettre les, quatre, les 13 autres. Et euh, la même chose pour Castleman, il manquait des cliniques. Donc, les gens ne pourraient pas prendre des rendez-vous, c'était bouqué. Puis, ils l'ont bouqué à Kentville. En tout cas, c'était une erreur. C'était pas juste nous, c'était arrivé dans 11, 12 autres bureaux de santé. En effet, avec beaucoup des appels, euh, des va et vient, tout ça, ils ont corrigé. Donc, euh, on a pu, euh, là, on a. On a vraiment bouqué, comme vous voyez, presque 5 000 personnes euh, avec ce système ici. Euh, mais ce système euh, provincial euh, vous, là, euh, vous donne rendez-vous seulement si vous êtes dans la catégorie des plus que 80 ans. Hein? Euh, donc, euh, nous, nous avons un système de pré-registration sur notre site web sur laquelle euh, les personnes sur phase 1 et, et euh, avec le temps euh, sur phase 2 vont être invités d'aller, ils pourraient aller enregistrer. Ils vont recevoir, soit qu'on va les... On va donner leur nom aux autres cliniques que nous aurons aux hôpitaux, par exemple, ou qui vont, euh, qui vont vraiment euh, avoir... Euh, euh, on prend la liste et puis on, on le met dans le système et puis ils vont recevoir un code. Et puis avec le code, ils pourront enregistrer avec, euh, avec le système du ministère euh, central. Pour les personnes qui n'ont pas accès au Internet, il y a une ligne téléphonique qui pourrait donner les rendez-vous. Donc, euh, avant que je finisse, je veux juste euh, comme souligner un peu que nous allons avoir euh, euh, plusieurs façons de livrer le, le vaccin, comme, comme euh, nous avons actuellement. Nous avons six cliniques de masse immunisation. En effet, euh, dans, dans Rockland, c'est dans l'arène jean Lalonde, Castleman, c'est Jean Brisson, euh, c'est dans les salles de conférence, mais ça va dans l'arène dans, arena dans quelques semaines. Euh, Oxbury, c'est dans la grande salle, beaucoup, c'est une grande salle des gymnases là-bas. Euh, Alexandria, c'est au complexe de Glengarry Sports Complex. À Cornwall, on avait commencé avec l'aréna de uh, Ed Lamley uh, au Cornwall Civic Complex, mais on a trouvé que malgré que c'était assez large pour nous, uh, c'était un peu difficile pour les aînés. Donc, euh, les prochaines 14 cliniques à Cornwall, d'ici première semaine d'avril, vont prendre lieu au Cornwall Square. Ça va bien, euh, ça va être pour les personnes âgées, 80 et plus, en effet. Et, euh, et à ce moment-là, on va le faire là-bas. Mais à un moment donné, quand on va avoir euh, ouvrir les cliniques pour des autres gens plus mobiles, si vous voulez, on, on, va, on va ouvrir une clinique de masse au euh, Benson Center, dans, dans le gros dôme qui, qui joue le soccer. C'est une grande, grande euh, surface pour nous qui va être suffisante pour nous. Euh, Winchester, c'est à l'Arena de Steel aussi. Euh, donc, semble, donc, vous voyez, on a des grands... Ça, c'est les masses humanisations où on aurait on a la capacité de faire euh, 500, 600, 800, 1000 personnes par jour, euh, dépendamment de l'âge, dépendamment du débit, euh, etc., euh, et euh, nous avons d'autres, euh, euh, on a des cliniques fixes, par exemple, il va y avoir les hôpitaux, les quatre hôpitaux vont, vont offrir les cliniques. Nous allons, nous allons, nous allons la liste centrale, nous, nous allons diriger euh, des personnes aux hôpitaux avec les rendez-vous. Euh, Cornwall a déjà commencé, les autres trois vont commencer bientôt. Euh, on a d'autres cliniques dans nos bureaux de santé euh, 
et aussi, on, ils auront aussi des cliniques dans la communauté avec le centre communautaire. Bien sûr, nous avons et nous, nous allons continuer avec les cliniques mobiles euh, avec laquelle euh, on, va, euh, on va, avec nos paramédics, comme on a fait en maison de retraite, on va aller aux appartements. On a beaucoup des aînés. On a des cliniques spéciaux qu'on va faire, par exemple, à, à Platagenet, en Brun euh, et euh, Morrisburg, par exemple, juste pour donner le chance à tout le monde d'aller. Euh, C'est sûr qu'on va faire les visites à la domicile pour les personnes qui ne pourraient pas être transportées du tout à cause des raisons médicales. On va voir les, les cliniques volants. Euh, quand, quand, volant. Et aussi, euh, on va, bien sûr, on travaille avec nos, euh, nos médecins, nos cliniques de première ligne, de, de, de soins primaires. Euh, on va nous fournir le vaccin et on va le demander euh, initialement de commencer à, à vacciner leurs patientes qui ont des maladies chroniques. Eux, ils savent où ils sont les, les, les patients. Donc, on va commencer comme ça. Et euh, bien sûr, il va y avoir les pharmacies qui vont avoir euh, le, euh, les vaccins bien, euh, bientôt. On n'est pas sûr quand. Donc, tout ça, euh, euh, vous voyez, on a un menu, une panoplie de différentes façons qu'on pourrait vacciner les gens. Euh, et euh, je pense que avec, euh, si on a le débit qui était promis, euh, soit pour le mois, euh, le, cette, les prochaines quatre semaines et après, on pourrait vraiment euh, 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 vacciner un bon pourcentage de population en mois d'avril. Mois, mois, mois et c'est pour ça que je suis pas mal confiante qu'on pourrait euh, avoir, euh, avoir euh, offrir une première dose à toutes les personnes qui veulent l'avoir euh, avant le 1er juin. So I'm going to just look at some questions here. Um, yeah, I corrected Hartwood. Um, yeah, I also talked about the uh, the appointments. Um, yeah, and uh, I, I also thought there's a question about AD and can't leave their house. Again, we're doing the house calls. I, I, I addressed that. And um, I had a question about uh, um, uh, Man, uh, McConnell Manor. Uh, about a positive test quarantine, I'm not aware of that. Uh, we have respond. I have responded to uh, the family's uh, claims at the Chartwell McConnell. What we're trying to do with all other retirement and long-term care homes is that uh, we understand right now that we have protocols that are by the ministry, um, and they're strict because. Um, we wanted to protect those individuals. Um, we we now know, as you know, I, we vaccinated all of them. So for all intents and purposes, um, you know, they are protected, not fully. So we have. I have been asking the the ministry now for two weeks to uh, change the the uh, change the um, uh, guidelines so that loosen them a bit, recognizing that you know right now long term care and retirement home residents have re have received their full two doses. You know, two weeks after they receive them, they're they're, they're optimally vaccinated. So uh, I, I was told that they're looking at um, looking at you know loosening dinner requirements, you know absentees, absences, you know those type of things. So I'm looking forward to them. I, today I, I was supposed to get some updates today. They they had they gave me some, but um, I'm still waiting for uh, new written guidelines and and uh, moving forward. So that was the that was about McConnell. Uh, the rest of the questions I've actually answered uh, in terms of uh, vaccine supply. So Jenna, I'm ready for questions. Thank you, Dr. Paul. Merci. Our first question comes from Philip Blanchard, Morrisburg leader. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, Dr. Paul. Um, my first question is, Ottawa moves to red tomorrow because of the rise in case counts there. Leeds Grenville Lanark has issued Section 22 orders for areas where they've had uh, increased infections, like in Lanark County, around Perth and Swift Falls. Mm -hmm. You said you recommended that this area stays orange for now. Will you be putting in any Section 22 orders for select areas where there are increases? Is that a strategy you'll to adopt? Sure. Not at this point, because I, unlike uh, my counterpart in in Leeds, uh, we have uh, our numbers have been pushed up by uh, s several just uh, outbreaks, uh, uh, institutional outbreaks, where we've had uh, 30 cases added. That's why uh, I keep an eye on it, and obviously, if it's required, I I'd rather not do it in certain areas. I'd rather do it for the whole health unit because everybody travels from one place to another, so it'll be very very difficult. So I, I try to stay away from regional approaches. But I, I wouldn't hesitate to do so if, re, if required. But at this point, because of the nature of where I know what these infections are, there are outbreaks and the numbers are going down. I, I'm satisfied at this point to keep it at orange. Again, uh, the ministry's numbers are a bit late. They have later details, so they show us a bit lagging in terms of red. I sent the chief medical officer of health this morning 
our latest numbers, which show us that you know we're teetering in the orange, and I would want to continue in orange. Um, uh, just give it another week and see, because I know we were pushed up dramatically and drastically by those uh, cases in Cornwall. Okay, and uh, my second question is: There's 12 active cases in South Dundas now. How many of these are related to the uh, Royal Bank? Sorry, Bank of Montreal in Morrisburg. And can you confirm that there are other businesses that are affected with that that are related? I don't know the answer. I can get that for you. I don't know the answer. Okay, thank you. Next question, James Morgan, The Review. Please go ahead. Hi, doctor. Uh, I have heard that there is, uh, heard of a significant outbreak at Hawkesbury General Hospital, and I was wondering if that's indeed actually the case. Yes. Yes, there is an outbreak. I think that they announced it this morning. I spoke to them. There is a, not a significant one. There is an outbreak there uh, with several cases uh, which we're following with and we're uh, working with a hospital to uh, isolate and do the usual precautions. Now, can you confirm how many there are exactly in Hawkesbury at the hospital? To my understanding, it's three cases. Three cases. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Next question comes from Thomas Stockton, TVC22, who asks, will you be administering AstraZeneca to those over 65 years old? Yes. Yes, we will. The recommendations now have been, re have been um, those restrictions have been removed. I did, I'm not surprised that they were removed. I, I was expecting them, knowing that, um, knowing that uh, we, uh, we uh, had seen uh, in other countries that the efficacy with big numbers was was pretty good. Uh, that it was good at that age group. So yes, if we have it, we'll be administering it. I'm not sure who will be administering it. Will likely pharmacies. We're not sure, but yes, uh, the indications are um, we can give it to anybody over 18. Thank you. Their second question was: With Ottawa moving into the red zone, were you tempted to change the local restrictions to deter those from Ottawa to come into the EOHU region? Uh, yes, I was. I, I spoke about it with the chief medical officer of health, but on the other hand, I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to uh, 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 impose any unnecessary hardness or you know or difficulties or uh, um, on our already strained uh, you know small businesses. Very difficult. Thank you. Call. Very difficult call that one. Thank you. Prochaine question, Annie-Rose Deschatelet, le droit, c'est à vous. Euh, oui, bonjour, Dr. Paul. Euh, premièrement, est-ce que vous pouvez rép répéter l'information par rapport à l'éclosion à l'hôpital de Hawkesbury en français, s'il vous plaît? Oui, euh, en effet, nous avons, il y a une éclosion, euh, on, il y a trois cas dans, dans, à l'hôpital sur un étage euh, et on travaille de façon étroite avec l'hôpital pour euh, vraiment euh, limiter avec les, les précautions de routine qu'on fait avec les éclosions. Parfait. Puis ma deuxième question, c'est concernant le, le vaccin d'AstraZeneca. Euh, évidemment, là, on ne l'administre pas encore dans la région, mais les gens vont, vont certainement avoir des, des craintes là, avec tout ce qui circule. Euh, Qu'est-ce que vous diriez justement aux gens qui vont se présenter pour, le, pour la vaccination, vont être sur le bord de recevoir le vaccin d'AstraZeneca et ne euh, vont, vont, vont pas vouloir en fait recevoir celui-là? Est-ce que vous leur donnez le choix d'en de, de, prendre un autre? En effet, je pense qu'idéalement, on devrait, on devrait avoir un choix, mais je pense, je pense que tout euh, qu'on attend dans la nouvelle, ce n'est pas tout à fait… Euh, je veux dire, OK, je veux juste recommencer. Premièrement, euh, la raison pour laquelle on n'a pas, on, initialement, on a dit 64 et moins, c'est parce qu'on euh, n'avait pas assez de données euh, pour confirmer et, euh, et supporter le fait qu'on pourrait le donner, que c'était efficace aux personnes plus que 65 ans. Euh, je n'étais pas surpris parce que là, avec 17 millions de doses qui ont donné en Europe déjà, on a pas mal de données euh, et la, la preuve positive que euh, c'est euh, efficace dans les personnes plus que 65 ans. Donc, ça, c'est une chose. Au niveau, au niveau des, euh, des caillots, parce que, comme vous avez vu, on avait quelques cas de caillots, euh, 10 jours, je pense, je ne me souviens pas le, le, le timing, euh, après la dose d'AstraZeneca, euh, encore avec 17 millions de cas, Sanad, euh, Canada, euh, pas cas, vaccination, euh, Santé Canada a, des, a fait des études et bien sûr, on, 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 on voit toujours la moyenne. Disons que le pourcentage est 1 disons, des, des caillots euh, de thrombose euh, dans la population générale. On, on, on doit le comparer dans des 17 millions qui étaient vaccinés et c'est la même chose. Il n'y a pas d'augmentation. Donc, pour le moment, 
je ne vois pas une relation euh, avec euh, les effets nocifs, euh, plus que les, les effets nocifs usuels que nous avons euh, pour, le, pour les autres vaccins aussi. Donc, c'est une chose à, su, à, à surveiller, mais pour le moment, on n'a pas d'autres. Euh, en Canada, on n'a pas... On n'a pas ces choses-là. Par contre, euh, si quelqu'un ne veut pas l'avoir, on peut pas donner, on peut pas forcer une personne de recevoir un vaccin contre euh, son consentement. Merci beaucoup. Pas de problème. Do those joining by phone have questions? Press star six to unmute. Ceux qui se joignent par téléphone ont-ils des questions? Appuyez les touches étoiles six pour désactiver le mode silencieux. Those are all the questions for today, Dr. Paul. Thank you. Merci.